In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. May the birth of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, be an infinite and abundant blessing to all Christians worldwide without any differentiation. May the Savior and the Redeemer of the world the one who is the only way, the only truth, and the only life on this holy, glorious, and historical day that changed the history of mankind once and for all. Be with you, guide you, save you, deliver you, and show you the way. Enlighten every heart, enlighten every intellect, enlighten every soul, every mind, every spirit, every being. Wherever they are, whoever they are, and more so, the Christian world, Christendom, with all its factions, may the Lord Jesus bring us all together in the unity of heart, where we are able to embrace one another in His love, in His divine and genuine love, heavenly love. We embrace one another, and may the Lord enlighten every soul to realize where the truth is and the way and eternal life lies <clears throat> for it is all in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth all glory to his holy and mighty name amen we need to shout for the Lord but we need to pray for the world for the Lord Jesus to enlighten the heart and show the way amen very good. So what is impossible to man is possible to God. And Jesus Christ is the true divine God revealed in the flesh, period. This area is non-negotiable. Negotiate with you on everything, but not on this one, because it is a non-negotiable area. Either the Lord Jesus is God or forget it. He cannot fit just to be a prophet. He cannot fit just to be a nice man. He cannot fit just to be a holy man. He's either God or everybody packs up their bags and go home. And I just wonder what kind of a home you're going to have. And Jesus Christ is not your home. I just wonder. So, therefore he is God. For he is. This is the truth. There is no other God but him. He is the creator of everyone and everything. And of course, when we say God, we do invoke the Holy Trinity. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one in nature, one in essence. But you see, the reason why Bishop Murray focuses on Jesus Christ, because our time and age claim to have also, I believe, in God. Which God? You need to specify this God. And that's why I focus on Jesus Christ of Nazareth, because He is the true divine God revealed in the flesh, the Son of God, the second person of the Holy Trinity that came down and dwelled in the womb of the Virgin of all virgins, our Holy Mother Mary. Should never lose track of the Holy Mother. Never. She is the mother of our Lord and Savior. She is our mother by the will of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He gave his Holy Mom to be our Holy Mom as well. It was the Lord's will. No one else's. No one else's, my beloved. So we thank our Holy Mother for giving us the Savior and the Redeemer of the world. And we thank the Lord Jesus for his wonderful mom, the Virgin of all virgins. She is the only mother that is virgin. She is the only woman that is mother and virgin at the same time. Just like the Lord Jesus is so unique in his birth, he was born of a woman with no earthly father, for his father is the one who art in heaven. So as the Holy Mother is the only woman that is virgin and mother at the same time. Amazing. Amazing how God works and operates in every one of us. So we thank you, Lord, for your mom. And we thank you, mom, for your beloved son, who is God revealed in the flesh. The, inca the Logos incarnate. Um, 
I'd like to share a couple of things about the gospel of today. One is to every Christian that confesses and professes Jesus Christ as their Lord and God. If you believe that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, then this is something from the gospel of today for all of us and all of you. Augustus Caesar ruled and conquered the world. He was the most powerful man on earth. I don't think there are presidents. I don't think there are leaders of the 21st century as powerful as Augustus Caesar. No matter how powerful the United States of America cannot in the open claim to be the one who rules over the entire world. They don't. Directly they don't. Indirectly maybe they do. But Augustus Caesar stood on the platform of the world and said, I rule. And if anybody's got a problem with this, let them face me. Nobody did. So Augustus Caesar with all his might and power, with all his authority, woke up one day and said, if one of the least of my servants in my mansion comes today and says to me, I, Augustus Caesar, the ruler of the world, how many people do you have in your empire under your rulership? What will my answer be? I don't know. That is a very weak thing coming from the most powerful man on the face of this earth. I don't know how many people. This is very, very weak of you, Augustus. So Augustus being the emperor, the ruler of the world, he gave this decree that everyone in his empire to go back to their own town, to their own lineage and be included in this census. So the word came all the way to Israel, which was under the rulership of the Roman Empire. And it went all the way to Galilee and it came all the way to this little village of Galilee called Nazareth, where the Holy Mother was betrothed to our father Joseph. And she was pregnant by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the word says, Augustus Caesar, the ruler of the world, says to everyone, you need to go back to your town, to your city, and be included in these senses. Because Augustus had this idea. He wants to know exactly how many people are under his authority. So the Holy Mother and our father Joseph the Just, being of the lineage of King David, they had to go to this city called Bethlehem because that is the city of King David and they are of that lineage. So they get up and walk all the way from north to south and would have taken them, I don't know, approximately maybe two to three weeks on foot. They had to go back to Bethlehem. And as they arrived in Bethlehem, the Holy Bible says it was time for the Holy Mother to give birth. And Jesus was born in a manger in Bethlehem. You see, Augustus Caesar, like our time and age, the 21st century, there are so many Augustus Caesars of the 21st century called secret societies. So many people think they are the rulers of the world because they have money, they have power, they have prestige, they have authority, they have position, they rule, whether directly or indirectly, in, in public or behind closed doors underground and behind the scenes they rule because they say we can do whatever we want to do like Augustus Caesar exactly so when he gave that decree said see everybody 
did what I said because nobody dares to stand in me, I Augustus. So according to this king, to this emperor, he thought he could do anything and everything and there is no power, neither in heaven nor on earth that can stop him. So as far as he's concerned, he, uh, he does everything and he can get away with it very easily. Not realizing it was God all along who was controlling Augustus Caesar. Who put that idea in his head? God, the Almighty. Why? Because there, was a, there is a prophecy that when the Messiah comes, he must be born in Bethlehem. That's a prophecy. And what is a prophecy? The word of God and the word of God cannot be broken. Neither can it be stopped by no power, visible or invisible. So Augustus thought he did as he wished and nobody stopped him, not realizing God was controlling Augustus all along. So God put that idea in his head and it was and he thought it was his idea. Then the decree went and came all the way to Nazareth, the Holy Mother and fa our father Joseph got up and walked all the way to Bethlehem because if the decree was not given by Augustus, Jesus would have been born in Nazareth and he would have broken the prophecy. Therefore, he wouldn't have been able to be the savior and the redeemer of the world because one of the things that qualifies Jesus as the savior and the redeemer is he needs to fulfill every single prophecy that was prophesied about him in the Old Testament. The Holy Mother wouldn't have got up. Our father Joseph wouldn't have got up. Why would you do that? Logically makes no sense. You're in Nazareth and she's pregnant, very hard to walk, let alone on foot three weeks to go all the way to the other side of the country. They wouldn't have done it at all. But so much for Augustus being in charge. <laughs> when any human being, now please let us open our eyes, our ears, our hearts, our mind, our soul, our entire being. When any human being thinks for a moment they can do anything and everything and get away with it, Satan has deceived that human being, period. Satan is laughing at that person. There is, there has never been anyone that were free in the sense humanity defines freedom. There has never been anyone nor will ever be any human being that can claim freedom in its absolute definition. That day will never happen. Never was, never is, never will be. The moment we walk away from the true divine God, there is another power controlling that human being called Satan. And Satan will come in a very deceptive way in a very cunning way, in a very twisted way and make you think you are free and you can do whatever you wish as so many people unfortunately of our time and age that 21st century are thinking and doing yet not knowing that God is always in control. They think like Augustus thought he is free but it was God. Who appoints presidents? This mighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So if people thought that they put a president in the White House and they got away with it, no, it was the Lord. They can rig the elections, they can falsify the truth and they think they did whatever they wanted to do and they did it, but no, it is God. It is the Lord in control.
So who put Saddam in power? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Who put Biden in power? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. No other power. Who put Albanese? The Lord Jesus. Nothing happens without the Lord's permission. But you may say, why do we have such a president? Why do we have such a prime minister? Well, let us ask ourselves, what have we done for the Lord all along? When we had the freedom, when we had good leaders that gave us that freedom and gave us that breathing space, what did we do for the Lord Jesus? We walked away from the Lord. The Lord is in control. The Lord knows what is good for you and what is not. He appoints at the right time and he removes at the right time because the Lord is God and God's timing is always perfect. Perfect. My beloved, my beloved Christians, We seek freedom, we seek democracy, we seek freedom of religion and freedom of speech, yet not realizing what we are truly seeking. Because what is freedom? What is the freedom of speech? Does it mean you can say anything and everything, whichever way, however way you wish to say it? No. What is the freedom of the human being? For you to be free to go out whichever way you want to go out, whether fully dressed or fully naked? You want to go out and be a male or a female or in between or none of the above? Is this freedom? My beloveds, the Lord Jesus came to give us one of them, one of the most beautiful gifts ever given to any human being or to the entire human race. Freedom. The Lord gave us freedom, but freedom defined by him, not by anyone else. You know, on an earthly level, on an earthly level, when are we free when we abide by the law, isn't it? Imagine with me for a moment, we're driving on the road and the speeding sign says 80 kilometers an hour. Or if you're in America, maybe 65 miles, I don't know. You're driving and it says 80 kilometers an hour. If you are doing 90 kilometers an hour and it's double demerits like now it is, be careful. You're, you are so, so, so cautious, so concerned, you're sweating because you, you just hope there is no police car hiding somewhere and the radar is targeted at your vehicle because if you are caught by that radar, you can kiss your license goodbye. So what happens when I am breaking the law? I am not free, am I? Do I drive absolutely comfortable? No, I'm on the edge. I'm worried. I'm concerned. I don't know. But imagine this with me. I'm doing 75 or 78 or 79 kilometers in an 80 zone. Let there be a million zillion police cars on the side of the road. It matters not. I'm free. Because I followed the rules. So when is a human being free? When they abide by the law. However, which law? It needs to be the number one thing, God's law. And I'll say this. This God, his name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I've said this before and I'll say it again. It's got nothing to do with being a Christian. Nothing to do with being a bishop. 
nothing to do with Rebi, like having read the Holy Bible. Listen, there are so many Christians, they don't even know who Jesus Christ is. So many Christians have no idea. No idea. It's got nothing to do. You were born in a Christian family, baptized as Christian and raised as Christian and went to church and received the holy body and the blood of Christ and you read the holy Bible and you listen to preachings. It's got nothing to do with that. You need to come and know Jesus for yourself. You need to establish this relationship one on one, an intimate personal relationship. What do you know of Christ? Don't tell me I heard someone says this and this and this. My preaching to all of you is like that salad. You know, the appetizer. It is not the main meal. You know, when you go to a restaurant, you don't order the main meal straight away. You go and get your snacks. Have a snippet on this one and on that one and taste this and taste that. Now it is the appetizer. Now my appet my, my, I'm, I'm ready now. I'm ready to, to dig in into the main meal. The preaching is the appetizer. You need to chase the main meal. We are laying down that path, paving it for you, but it is up to you to walk in it. Any preacher and every preacher is there to put you on the right path. But it is up to you to walk it. It's not up to the preacher. I listened to this bishop saying this and this and this. What have you done about it? What have you done about it? So you need to come into a, a real, actual relationship with the Lord. So when you hear a preacher say you need to pray, you better pray. When the preacher says you need to come to church on a regular basis, you need to come. When the preacher says you need to read the Holy Bible and become familiar with it, you need to do that. You see, what's the point of going to the doctor and getting all the medications necessary for your full recovery? And then you take all that medication and put it on the shelf or throw it in the bin and go back after a month and blame the doctor for not healing you. Excuse me. The doctor will not Drink the, po the, the medication on your behalf. <laughs> You're sick, not the doctor. <laughs> I'm sick. Have you ever gone to a doctor fully healed? Like nothing wrong with you? Do you go to the doctor when nothing is wrong with you? Poor doctors, they do need sometimes that recognition. Even when you're not sick, just go to the doctor and say, look, um, I'm not sick doctor. I just can't say th thank you for what you do. God bless you and remain honest. Okay. <laughs> but when do we go to the doctor? When we acknowledge and confess that we are sick. So when you come and listen to the preaching saying, do this and do this, it's exactly those prescriptions of the doctor. So what do you do with those prescriptions? You need to apply them take them don't just go out and say oh that was a nice preach oh some nice words i had i learned something what do you mean you need to apply them you need to apply them my beloved i need to come and begin a relationship with the lord jesus begin a relationship with the lord i've put you on that path you need to walk it now So the first message, if you believe in Jesus Christ, don't ever fear whatever is happening in the world. Everything is under the control of the Lord. No one rules except Jesus. But when something happens like the pandemic that happened in 2020, when something happens like that, what did we learn from it? Yes, it was a pandemic. It was never a pandemic. It was a pandemic. There was never a vaccine. It was just a jab. But what do you learn? What do you learn from all of this? I learned number one, 
No power, neither in heaven, nor on earth, nor beneath it. Satan and all of his powers, no power can ever shut the door of the church. The only one who closes the door of the church is the rightful owner, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. For the church is to be closed. That is telling me and you and everyone who calls themselves a Christian, the Lord is not happy with his beloved children. We have walked away from him. It is a reminder. Where are you heading? Where are you going? What are you doing with your life? What are you doing with your destiny? What are you doing? Don't fear no one. And don't fear anything when Christ is truly your Lord, your God, your King, your everything. What are you fearing? Somebody might come and kill you. Hallelujah. You'll do me the, the greatest, you know, thing. I don't fear nothing. You see, when you don't have anything to lose, you have no fear. The only time you'll have fear is when you are afraid of losing something. But when you have the Lord Jesus, you've got nothing to lose. And even if you go to the grave, the Lord will raise you from there for he is God revealed in the flesh who stood in front of that tomb of Lazarus and called him forth after being rotted in the grave for four days. So the first thing we need to do is build a relationship, establish a relationship with the Lord Jesus. How do you begin a relationship? Well, look at the relationships on earth, learn from them. When, when you, my dear Jono, meet this girl who happens to be Rachel for the first time ever, and I hope you don't meet her at the club or at the pub, it's the wrong place. So when you see this girl and you say, whoa, who is this good looking girl? You go up to her and bump accidentally. And say, oh, sorry, I didn't see. And deep down you say, your beauty blinded me. So you bump into her and you say, G'day, what's your name? My name is John O. Well, you need to be an Aussie, eh? So you begin a relationship with talking. When was it the last time you, you talked to the Lord? When was it? And I mean a genuine talk. Not a surface level. No. What is a genuine talk? Is when you go, you drop everything for Him. You see, because when you are with the one you love, the most everything else ceases everything else ceases and the number one thing that ceases and must cease is time it's time because the last thing you will do is look at the watch because you don't want the time to take you away from the one you love so you need to enter into a dialect conversation genuine from the heart no lip service no falsification of the truth. Come as you are. Go to the Lord and say, Look, Lord, I've done everything evil under the sun before your holy sight. I've done this and I've done this and I've done this. And I'm confessing it to you, Lord. I want to talk to you. Please answer me, Lord. When you are genuine, speak from the heart. The Lord only recognizes the language of the heart. Because the heart never lies. But the lips and the deceptive tongue always lies. Build a relationship with the Lord. When you begin this journey, the Lord will start building you up, making you stronger, wiser. Then whatever happens after that is secondary. No, no, nothing to do with it. So whatever Augustus Caesar is doing in the 21st century, who gives one penny? It is the Lord in control of those who do things underground, above ground, behind closed doors, behind closed curtains. The Lord sees all. The Lord is in control of all, including Satan. So what are you afraid of? Why are you worried? Leave everything in the Lord's care.
capable hands without using the word but please don't use it but bishop like I'm, I can't I can't stop not think about it's not working out okay I'll leave it in his hand but I'm gonna die tomorrow the doctor said you're gonna die but you know I know I trust in the Lord but if I don't do this it's not gonna work listen when you leave it in his hands you go and do whatever you gotta do but do it with confidence not shaky ground not fear not anxiety because these are all against faith against faith so Augustus Caesar gave a decree he thought he was doing whatever he wants not realizing it was God <laughs> in control because God wanted our father Joseph and the Holy Mother you know pregnant with the Savior of the world he wanted them to go to Bethlehem they wouldn't have gone unless Caesar gives that decree so who did it God not Caesar God and a piece of advice to all church leaders if you think you can do whatever you want as a church leader if you think you can introduce laws as you wish as a church leader you're mistaken the Lord never left his throne vacant when the Lord Jesus comes to someone like me a piece of wreck and then he gives me his his rank he gives me his throne he gives me his name his title everything and then he says sit on that throne that doesn't mean the Lord Jesus is gone and left that position vacant for me to do as I please that will never happen the Lord is the only rightful owner of the church he is the only head of the church there is no other head but him it is his love his grace his mercy that puts leaders in his place but that doesn't mean he has gone on holidays or left it vacant so if any church leader come up with any laws that are contradictive to the teachings of the one and only Jesus Christ of Nazareth that leader is absolutely mistaken from head to toe they need to repent otherwise they will be punished by the Messiah regardless what their position is high or low nobody escapes the justice of God nobody nobody trust in the Lord build that relationship with the Lord focus on the Lord don't focus on what's happening around you and in the world leave everything in the Lord's capable hands I don't want to keep you too long even though I'm very tempted but the other thing my beloveds let me share this with you on how God operates in some ways we will never fully fathom God impossible but we have glimpses according to his grace when God comes to do anything God's beginning of that work is the end so God's beginning is the end not the beginning let me explain what I mean see when God came to create Adam the first creation ever he created Adam the beginning was his was creating Adam but that beginning was the end result not the beginning so God created Adam the end result and then came back and started working in Adam to get him to what he had created in the first place this is why Adam was created adult not a baby <laughs> you with me so if anybody asks you say well why was Adam created mature because that was the end result not the beginning the beginning is a baby but the end is an adult so God's beginning is the end so what is that telling me and you since God's beginning is the end what are you worried about <laughs> you see we worry about the end result don't we 
Not so much the beginning, but we worry about the end result. Well, since the end result is maturity, well, God is going to get you there. Just let him. Let him be. You know, when, uh, when you buy a, a television set, what do you buy the TV set at its infancy stage? <laughs> a couple of cables here and a couple of screws over there. No, you get the full package. You get the end result. But that end result package is the beginning. Because the moment you get it, that you get it mature. But what do you do? You open the box. That's the beginning. And then you get the manual and you throw it away because you're a genius. Don't we all do that? Geniuses. I was, I was talking to these beautiful people the other day. It was uh, Christmas carols. I was invited by these wonderful uh, Indian Christian people. Um, and I said, Valerie Nani. <laughs> Which means thank you very much. Um, I thought they were gonna, they were gonna get upset, but they were very happy when I did that. <laughs> God bless them. I love our beloved Indian people. As when I joke, I joke because the only reason I joke is when I love someone. I cannot joke with someone that is totally a stranger to me. But when that someone is very close, I'm more relaxed. I can joke with them. So. When you get that package, the very first thing when you open that box is that little booklet called manual. Manual is a compounded word, two in one. Manu, abbreviation of manufacturer. Al, A L, Al in Latin means mind. So manu, manufacturer, al, mind, manufacturer's mind, they called it manual. So what is the manual? The manufacturer's mind. Why? Because this manufacturer who came to create this television, it was in his mind, this idea and no one else's except his. So when he came and brought this mind of his, and made it possible it became a TV set. This mind of the manufacturer is the only one that knows how this TV operates from A to Z because everything in this TV was in his mind. Since he put it together, what did this manufacturer do? The manufacturer put his mind on paper and sent this book with the product to say to the purchaser two things. I give you a guarantee and I give you a warranty. Two different things. I'll give you a guarantee. If you follow my manual, if you follow the manufacturer's mind, I'll guarantee you everything in the book the TV will do for you. And then if you follow the manual to the dot, I will give you a warranty if the TV does not function as the manual, I warranty you a, an absolute full replacement of a new one. God came to create his product called Adam, the human race. So when God came to create, he began with his end. He did not create a screw or a cable. He created the full product. So the beginning of God is the end of that product. He came and created Adam. And then he packaged Adam. And in that package, he put his book, Manuel, the manufacturer's mind. What is the manufacturer's mind? The Holy Bible. That is, that is the manufacturer's mind, the Holy Bible. So he put the Holy Bible in that box and he sent, he shipped it from heaven to earth. Now the genius is us. We opened the box and we grabbed the manual and said, I don't want this. I know what I'm doing. Mom, dad, this is Australia. This is America. 
this is Canada. This is Europe. This is not some village in the Middle East. You ignorant people. You illiterate people. Mom, what qualifications do you have? You didn't even finish primary school. Look at me. I'm a uni graduate, Sydney University, Notre Dame. You don't know nothing, mom. I'm genius. I'm educated, mom. You, you barely can read and write. I'm a doctor. I'm a lawyer. I'm a professor. But an atheist. So we took that manual and we said, we can figure it out. You see, what happens when you throw that manual aside? The only thing is left for you and me to do with that product is experiment with it. <laughs> because this product has the mind of the manufacturer. I'm not the manufacturer. I'm not God to know how this human operates and functions. So what happens when we grab the remote control? What do we do? We experiment. Let me see what this button does. Oh, oh. Nothing, no screen. I'm experimenting. When we begin to experiment 100%, we will abuse the product. 100%. Because we are trying to be the manufacturer, yet we're not. We're trying to be God. We can never be. We can never read the mind of God. How can we know how to operate this product called the human being? So we took the manual, God's mind, and we put it aside. I don't need to read the Holy Bible. I'm a good Christian. Well, I don't need God at all. There is no God. I'm God. So be, that human begins to experiment because that's all they can do. So they started experimenting. What happened? They became neither a male nor a female. That's one of the experiments. The other one, we became stubborn, not accepting any advice from no one because I'm experimenting. You see, mom comes and dad comes to the children yes my dear son are you listening my son don't mix with those so-called friends you call them friends but i can see they are troublesome don't go with them my son daughter don't mix with these girls they are negative influence on you ah oh, come on mom leave me alone because i'm experimenting i put the manual aside I'm not listening. The day I don't listen to God, I will listen to no other being, period. So you experiment, my son. It's not a joke. So when you go out with those so-called friends, let me see what's going to happen to you after one, two, six months, one year, two years. You'll end up in a lot of trouble. You either get destroyed, killed, or imprisoned, or lost for good. You have destroyed your future. One reason being you did not listen to the manual. You did not read it. So you experimented with this product called a human being. You destroyed, abused this product. See, without God, there is nothing good. Without God, there is no morals. There is no ethics. There is no value. There is nothing. God. Adam experimented. Did not follow the manual broke god's word fell short of the glory of god and the entire human race was destroyed that's why god out of his love and mercy he said i will give you a warranty and a, and a guarantee now this product that is coming soon in the end of times this product will do as i say as God says, no one else. Jesus was born. Be the guarantee and the warranty for every human being that accepts Jesus Christ as the manual revealed in the flesh. 
the manufacturer's mind revealed in the flesh. When you go to Jesus and listen to his directions, he will give you a guarantee that you will do everything God wants you to do. And when you listen to Jesus and you break something in that product, the human being, he gives you a warranty that I will replace it for you and you. You were a sinner. I made you a saint. You were lost and I found you. You were dead and you are alive today. I gave you a replacement. The former Adam, I replaced him completely with the latter Adam. The latter Adam is the perfect man, perfect God. In the human level, he is the ultimate of all ultimates. This is the standard of God as far as humanity is concerned. God wanted every human being to be like Jesus, the perfect man. God says, when you look at Jesus, this is the way I wanted the human being to be like. Total obedience to God, not to themselves, not to Satan. But the problem, when we experiment for ourselves, we ruin things, we destroy things, we abuse things. This girl, a teenager, to all my beloved teenagers, sons and daughters. True story. I received this phone call, this is a little while back ago, from a very distressed mother. A very distressed mother. She calls crying, crying, crying. I barely understood what she was saying. I sat in the car and I actually, <laughs> I was speeding. <laughs> Thank God there was no coppers. <laughs> I'm confessing. <laughs> I thought like something went extremely wrong. So I go there. She is absolutely shattered, the mother. She said, my teenage girl, the other day the police came and knocked at the door. I opened to my shocking surprise, a constable and a couple of other police officers. They said, is your daughter home? She said, yes. She started shaking. What's wrong, officer? Yes, my daughter is home. He said, um, your daughter has been in a place where someone got killed. What? Officer, you're at the wrong address. My daughter never leaves home. And when she leaves, she tells me where she goes. I know exactly where she was yesterday. He said, I don't think so, mother. Can we come in and talk to your daughter? Please come in. Daughter, come out. She came out shaking started crying she knew she was in trouble they interrogated the girl and what happened this girl as she was uh, as she was leaving the house she said mom i'm going to my girlfriend's house so and so mother she knows that family very well so she was comfortable for her daughter to go there according to her she said it's okay daughter you can go there not knowing the mother, she lied to her mom. She did not go to that girlfriend's house. She went with other girls to a birthday party, totally different location. And in that place, there was people there that were asking for trouble. Other people came who were against them and a fight started ending up with somebody being killed in front of this girl's eyes. So they came asking her, did you see the murderer? A teenager, she could have lost her future. Why? Because she did not speak the truth to her mom. My son, my daughter, I beg you, I beg you. When parents come and say no to you, they do it out of love, out of concern, out of being protective because they don't want you to do the wrong things which they did in their life. You see, they have experience of life. You, my son, you, my daughter, you do not have experience of life. You are still experiencing it, but you are not experienced enough. But mom and dad are older than you. 
wiser than you, more mature than you. They've done it. They've been there in the highs and the lows of life. They have experienced so many things. Yes, they were also teenagers and they chose the wrong friends and walked in the wrong path. They veered off and walked in dark alleys. They know exactly what it's like. That's why out of love and fear for your well-being child, they are extremely cautious and careful. This is why you think they are suffocating you. They are not. They are worried about your well-being. Do not abuse the product. Use the manual. Start reading the Holy Bible. Because the only one that is going to teach you on how to have good morals, good value, ethics, and principles of life is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So next time, when mom and dad say no, you say to them, yes, no problem. If they allow you do it, if they don't, respect their wishes. Because when you listen to mom and dad, you're listening to God. Respect your father and mother. This is one of the ten, one of the commandments of those ten which God gave to Moses. He says, respect your father and mother so that I may bless you and give you a life abundant. When you respect mom and dad, you're respecting God. But mom and dad, you need to respect God in order for your children to respect you. What goes around comes around. St. Paul talks about this so beautifully. The Lord Jesus is the perfect illustration of what God is looking for in the human race. God's intention was for all humanity to listen to Him, not listen to themselves or to any other power, but listen to Him. Today the Lord came to give us that opportunity so we can have that opportunity once again to come back to God so embrace the Lord Jesus thank the Lord Jesus for coming thank the Lord Jesus for being born in Bethlehem the house of bread that's what it means Beth Lehem or Lehem Beth means house Lehem or Lehem or Lahmo means bread the house of bread and he said in John 6 I am the bread the living bread that descended from heaven. He who eats me shall live in me forever.